Just a, a little step to your left. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little, a little per, yeah, perfect. Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It's Jordan Drake here out on a beautiful contrasty day, which is perfect for testing some of the new features in the Canon R5 firmware 1.3. There's a few small features we're not gonna talk about today, but the three main ones are all video centric. And the first one I wanna talk about is the addition of C-Log3, which Chris is filming me on right now. Now bear in mind, he's shooting this episode, gets bored easily, and sometimes likes to put me in bizarre compositions. So you can look for those today. So right now Chris is shooting me in original Canon C-Log, which is what the R5 shipped with. And I was very impressed with the picture that came out of this camera with the exception of the dynamic range. So if you were shooting a high contrast shot, a lot of the time I really didn't like the skin tones we get with original log. There was weird noise and color in the shadows. Just didn't really care for it. So now we've switched over to C-Log3 and you can see there's a lot more information in the shadows and highlights. You can see a really extreme example of it comparing them here. It's just a better picture in every regard. More of the image is actually usable, including the shadows, and skin tones look really nice. So here you can see if we follow Canon's recommended exposure, then we do wind up getting an extra stop of information in the highlights with C-Log3. However, you could also give both C-Log1 and C-Log3 the same exposure, and you'll find that you get an extra stop of information in the shadows. So you have the option to expose either way. Now one other interesting thing that Richard Butler found when he was looking at the shadow areas is, you can see that there's a straight line on C-Log1, meaning there's no real information. But with C-Log3, there's actually a little information at the very bottom of the graph, and we can see that played out in the real world here. You can see that with the regular C-Log, that noise reduction has just smooshed all the detail out of this, where there's a much more natural look to the C-Log3 footage. This also really demonstrates that kind of blue-purple color shift you see in the shadows with C-Log1. C-Log3 is just a better profile. Now for a more detailed look at all this, be sure to check out Richard Butler's article on dpreview.com. I'll have a link in the description below. Now initially I wasn't super impressed with C-Log3 because Canon's LUT and the built-in one in Apple's Final Cut weren't terribly impressive. So I asked my friend Tyler Stallman, who uses these profiles a lot, and he actually sent me his own LUT. Skin tones look great on it. If you're shooting C-Log3, I really recommend it. So I'll put a link to it in the description below. One of my favorite things about shooting video on the R5 is it has just an absolutely beautiful 4K 120p mode for shooting slow motion. I've had a lot of fun with that, but there were some real usability issues, and most of them just come down to the fact that these are absolutely huge files while you're shooting. An 128 gig card is gonna get you eight minutes of real-time slow motion capture. On top of that, you need to use a CF Express card. You can't record the SD cards. It's just too much data for that. Other real problem is this really chewed into your time remaining in terms of overheating. You could record for over 10 minutes of real-time use, which is like over an hour in terms of actual playback, but it's when you're recording little clips of 120p, you'd find your 4K time remaining is just constantly whittling down. So at the latest firmware, we now get 1080, 120 frame per second recording, and that gets rid of all those usability issues with the 4K mode. For starters, our file size is now about a quarter of what it is in 4K, which makes perfect sense but that means you can now record these files to an SD card. As well, if you're shooting some of the more demanding modes like 8K or 4K HQ that can cause the camera to overheat, I found that the 1080-120 has no impact on that. So you can quickly grab a slow motion shot and not have to worry about overheating the camera at all. In terms of the quality, I was actually really happy to see that the 1080-120 is exactly the same quality as shooting 1080-24, 1080-30, any of your standard record modes. So it's quite good. It's not 4K-120 good, but it's totally acceptable for the odd slow-mo shot. The third major addition that we've got here is the ability to record compressed RAW video. So before we had the 8K RAW, this is their new 8K RAW Lite, uh, spelled L-I-T-E, because Canon still thinks that misspelling words is cool like it's the 90s or something like that. But this has a real benefit for you. The file sizes are just over half the size of their standard 8K RAW. So before I was getting seven minutes on a 128 gig card, now I'm getting 13 minutes. It is quite a bit more usable. And dropping those files into Resolve, I didn't really see an appreciable difference on how far you can push them. So I would say stick to 8K RAW Lite if you wanna do RAW video with this camera. Chris, I love your weird frames and everything, but can we just go tight? Cause I'm gonna fall off this log and get my boots squishy.
The first few firmware updates for the R5 really just seem to be Canon trying to get the overheating under control, but it's awesome now that we're starting to see real feature additions to this. These are all really useful upgrades, but there are still a few things I'd love to see. Some weird quirks like not being able to see your histogram and level while you're rolling video, I'd love to see that taken care of. So I would say the R5 is now, again, a much more compelling video camera. It just keeps getting better. I'm looking forward to seeing what they do in the future. If you want to see what they do in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We will see you all again very soon with more DP Review TV.